Hey y'all, hey, we are back for another review of Sisters. We're on season seven, episode two, entitled Drunk in Love. Um, we picked at the end of episode six, we saw Gary um pleasuring himself to Andy's undergarments um we pick up with Penelope walking in on him and, re and her realizing that he is still obsessed with Andy and of course he's trying to play it off talking about he was just you know riled up and he needed to relieve himself um and you know she's 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 giving him a piece of her mind or whatever and now they gotta escape they gotta get up out of Dodge because she don't even want to be there no more um Penelope walks up front and she doesn't let on that anything is happening she just says she's tired or blames it on the baby or whatever and they leave Gary and Penelope are in the elevator, and he is giving her attitude as if she has done him something. And she realizes that she has made a grave mistake in giving him a second chance. He's telling her, like, you need to get over it. It's your fault anyway because um, I haven't been able to have sex with you in a week. And she's like, listen. And he's basically saying, like, you're annoying. Um, he's basically annoyed at the fact that she's pregnant and she's tired and she don't feel like, you know, being intimate with him. And so... Um, you know, they're getting into it, they're getting into it, and he's trying to make her be quiet, like, oh, it might be cameras in here, people might see us, and she is saying what she needs to say, she's getting it off her chest, and he gets so pissed that she does not oblige him that he goes to grab her arm so that she doesn't cause a scene in the elevator, even though it's just those two people in the elevator. And, um, in that moment, I knew that something, something is gravely wrong with Gary. Um, something's, something's wrong with this guy. You, you did something to me, and you're mad because I'm having a reaction to something that you did to me, so much so that you will physically put your hand on me. It would have been Solange in that elevator if it were me. Pregnant or not, it just would have had to get rocking because not you grabbing somebody in the elevator. But what I don't understand is why nothing, has, no harm has come to Gary thus far. And that's, that's just all I'm going to say on that one because there's a whole lot of... There's a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. And I don't give a damn about how much you're making. When you're getting physical, and this ain't the first woman you've gotten physical with. I feel like your wife might have said something about you being physical with her. Um, I rem we remember you hugging or restraining Andy so much so that she passed out. And now you grabbing people's arms. Like, it's giving escalation. Um, and I don't really, I don't really too much like it. Anyway, Sabrina's talking to Danny, trying to convince her that there's um, something more to her dreams, and it could be subconscious. Um, she also thinks that it has something to do with Preston leaving. Um, and of course, you know, Dandy's not, she's not ready. She's not ready to hear it. She's not ready to get into it, but, you know, we'll just revisit that at a later time. Gary goes to Hayden, and he needs a place to stay for the night, because he didn't stormed out the elevator, and he told Penelope, you know, have fun being at my place by yourself, because I ain't gonna be there, because you done pissed me off, as if she's done anything to him. Um, and tells Gary basically, so now he wants to blackmail uh, Hayden and say, hey, I owe you for getting that information on Tamara, so the least you could do is let me stay here tonight. Um, and Hayden's like, all right, man, just, just for tonight, figure your crap out tomorrow, but I don't even feel like dealing with you, but since you're here, we're going to get through the night and we'll deal with it later. And then he goes on to insist on having a drink with Hayden. Um, and Hayden's like, all right, man, like, come on, let's get the toast over here. What, what is it? And... <laughs> Gary proposes a toast and the toast is to getting B words and money as if he is a, a 20 year old 19 year old dude in college and Hayden's is looking like what kind of toast is that like dude you're you're engaged uh what are you talking about and he goes on to confirm a lot of suspicions saying that he's never he never actually plans to marry Penelope he's just buying time um and now he wants Hayden, he, he now he's back on his his diabolical crap, and he's telling him telling uh Hayden like, listen, you need to help me take Jordan down. And Hayden is like, well, what he ain't do nothing to me? Like, what am I taking him down for? Uh, which when Hayden makes the most sense in the room, something ain't right. But um, so which gives me the inclination like he don't really care about Penelope. Um, he's now just on a one man mission now to. He was probably, you know, just using Penelope up like all the other women in his life, but she became a bigger fish because Jordan is now dating your ex, and so you need to keep Penelope around in order to have this access or, you know, exact your plan on taking Jordan down because he's now dating Andy, which it's just a whole lot. It's a whole lot of energy to exhaust on um, 
an ex while also ruining somebody else's life in the process. But it's Gary and it's never not going to make, it's never going to make sense. But by the end of this episode, hopefully there's some other things that'll foil his plans that'll keep him out of those people's way. But we'll get to it. All right. Hayden and Andy run across each other in the office. And Hayden is so perturbed at Gary's behavior that he wants to have a civilized conversation with Andy. Ain't that about a blip, right? Hayden is talking to Andy and asks her, like, hey, what's up with your boy Gary? Like, what's what's the problem? He uh, tells her, like, him and Penelope was beefing last night. And he stayed at his house. Um, and tells him that they put on a good front the night before. Hayden says something is off of Gary because he's, he's up to a yet another scheme. And Andy's realizing that, mm, I know he was on some bull crap because, you know, I, I knew it wasn't all they, they said it was. Um, and so now she's trying to figure out, like, what's really going on with Hayden. I mean, with Gary and Penelope, even though that shouldn't even really be your business because that's you ain't got a dog in that fight. But, of course, it's going to become her business. All right. Sabrina's on the phone talking to Karen. Um... And it's just small talk. It's small banter. It's, you know, not anything too deep. We're talking about financial planning, uh, family planning, just just small things, some questions Sabrina were ask, was asking. Just girl talk, right? And when she's done with the conversation, she hangs up the phone. Um, and I'm assuming to be her boss, some, some white woman. Stops by and tells her, hey, I heard you on the phone. Heard you on the phone talking. Um, and remind, goes on to remind her that, hey, we don't like personal calls at the office. And that's cool. That's cool. I ain't going to make it racial. But that's cool. But it pissed me off. Because what it felt like. It felt like Sabrina is back in this office. She's been demoted in a sense. Um, and you kind of feel like you got the one up on her. Like you, I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. It feels like she has the one up on Sabrina. Like oh well you know we did you a favor. We're bringing you back. So you need to be on your best behavior. You need to be on your P's and Q's. Well excuse the fuck out of me. Like this ain't the only bank that can hire people and I need for Sabrina to get get into some of that because she's she, Sabrina is giving this season she's giving a little bit more sass she's giving a little bit more um adventure when it comes to rich and you know in her self-expression and things like that but I need some of the, I need a little bit of that to translate to your professional life because all right y'all did a, did me a solid bringing me back but not too much on me because I was also found innocent so don't treat me like a criminal that's what I want for Sabrina. So let me know if I'm if I'm on if y'all on the same page with me. But it gave snark and it gives like that passive aggressive that white women do when they, you know, want to flex their little bit of power, even if we make the same pay type shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Moving right along. Zach and Fatima are at the office and they're ready for the arbitration hearing. You know, they got their paperwork, their witness statements, they, they got they got their paperwork lined up and they're ready. Um, after which they know that they're gonna have a decision and Andy tells them like, Okay, good, very good. And she asked them like, Hey, when's the wedding date? Hard stop. What you mean? What they gotta do with anything? And she was like, you know, it's less about my me being nosy, more about optics. Because, you know, when it comes to the, the court system, um, optics matter and so they're gonna you know, someone may ask about a wedding date because they want Michael to go to a stable home and that's going to be a consideration that you know that they take into account so you know you guys want to, may want to start preparing yourself to answer that question if it comes up um neither of them can answer that question right now but you can see that Fatima is kind of unnerved by the question and I'm you know I'm not mad at it I can see how she would be unnerved because there's a whole lot coming on um as far as dealing with all of his exes and the babies like there's a whole lot that she's already dealing with so wedding is not at the top of her list of things to do um not only that her and zach are going to get into it later on in the episode because he wants to um set up a trust for michael and she wants him to you know just get a hundred percent clarity on the paternity before setting up financial um things for a child that hangs in the balance and reasonable uh you know i, I can't be mad at it but um that's i'm sure that's going to be some contention here in the future. All right. Sabrina goes to Maurice and he's being kinky on the internet for money because he just, that's what he needs to do right now. Um, he claims that he's making more money than her anyway. So whatever. Um, he's doing what he got to do to get his bills paid child. Maurice is, is going on with his life. I guess, I guess the lawsuit ain't come about yet that he wants to do for discrimination or whatever gets his old employer. The girls are out to brunch, and Andy tells her that her and Jordan are 
knocking, body rocking, knocking boots, honey. And she is just so infatuated and having the time of her life. She tells her that Jordan, that she tells the girls that Gary is no comparison to Jordan. And I would say it's less about anatomy than it is about emotion because, you know, Jordan treats her well. Um, you know, and I'm sure that there's some emotional tie that that's coming with that as opposed to Gary and just his sole purpose um, to hit and quit. So that, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, get, Karen shows up and I don't remember if Karen was invited to dinner and didn't show up. Or if she just happened to stumble upon the girls there at dinner. But um, we see her walking to the restaurant and she sees the girls out um, having a good time. She spots Fatima and she just tiptoes back out without confrontation. Um, don't know if you consider that growth uh, or not. Because we know Karen, if there's confrontation to be had, she's there for it. Um, she's taking a different approach this time. So we just going to leave it at that. Um, they get on the, com the topic of therapy and Danny is not, she, again, she's not sold on the concept. You know, everybody's trying to convince her. And then Fatima tells her, like, listen, I have a black woman therapist, you know, named Cresha, and you might like her. Like, she's not very judgmental. And I enjoyed the fact, in this scene, I enjoyed the fact that they were delicate with Danny. We know that she was hesitant. We know that she had some preconceived notions about what therapy was like. We know all of these things. Um, and especially Fatima, like, they were delicate in their tone. They didn't try to force it down her throat. Um, and I won't say that Tony didn't either, but it was, it just came better received from her friends that that's just how that works out sometimes. Um, and so she, she agrees. She agrees. I'm going to do one session. I'm going to feel old girl out. I know I'm a lot to handle. I don't know how it's going to go, but I'm a, I'm a see. And so that's pretty much all you can ask for at this point. Fatima tells them that Zach plans to ask Karen to name the baby Zach Jr., um, even though she has some feelings about it, she wants, you know, of course, if they plan on getting married, she will want their child to be the junior. Girl, I don't understand the whole junior conversation because that's a whole lot. It's a whole lot I don't feel like getting into. But um, she feels some kind of way about it. But I think it's less about the naming than it is about him wanting to start to trust, him wanting that baby to be a junior, all of that. And they don't have... Um, irrefutable evidence as to who that baby's daddy is that is for Tima's issue my presumption um you know let me know what you think let me know if I'm wrong in what I'm thinking all right Danny gets home whatever Danny gets home she tells Tony about therapy and that she's going to try it out blah 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 Sabrina gets, all right, so everybody then broke up from, from brunch and everybody, you know, got that brunch, that brunch tipsy going on. So it's, it, that's the haze that's going to be in all these conversations from here on out. Sabrina goes home and she presents the family planning conversation to Rich and wanting to have kids. And my job, let's just assume they're only a few months into this thing. Um, it appears that they differ on kids, pets, pretty much most things that relate to family, um, uh, family planning, um, and it might not have been the right time to bring it up. She is kind of drunk. And she's like, okay, let, he had already said, like, I don't want no kids, no more kids, whatever the conversation, no kids. Let's just say no kids. Um, and she's like, okay, let's go practice making a baby. And so that's going to be off-putting for somebody, you know, that does not want kids. You bring up the baby conversation, especially amongst the haze of mimosas. So we're not going to get into it. Um, she goes to the back room again to prepare for him, and he's trying to find an escape child. And he, she gave him one by way of passing out drunk, and he's like, listen, this is getting weird, and I'm going to go ahead and go. So he goes home, and I'm sure we'll talk about that. We'll have to revisit this conversation later on. Now, again, they're going to differ, so that could be um, an issue in their, in their relationship, um, even though it's early on, which is fair. It is fair to have these conversations early on before you waste people's time, be together for all these years, or try to change somebody's mind on something that they've decided against. So, we'll see what happens. Andy gets home, again, under her mimosa haze. Um, Jordan is trying to tell her that he has the mayor's support. He has a top PR form, which, you know, all these things that's going to give him a leg up in the comp in his competition. And all she really wants to do is knock his boots, child, and she ain't a bit more interested than anything. Um, congratulations. Fatima gets home, and again, she's, she's unsure about... Um, 
Cameron's DNA test that she presented to them and suggest, just suggest, hey, just one more time for the record. Let's go get our own. And let's be there to watch. Let's be 100% sure before we get too deep into naming this baby, setting trust aside, wedding. Before we get into all the, the logistics, all the things that's going to tie us to this baby, let's just be sure. And Zach appears to have believed what was presented by Karen. And he's like, listen, for what? You going to, you know, you going to brunch with them girls and they're getting in your head. You need to stop hanging out with them because you always come home with this kind of stuff. Um, just kind of breezing over her feelings about the situation. And um, Fatima lets him know, like, listen, I'm hesitant um, because you have all these things in place and we don't have paternity, you know, squared away. And so let's just do that. And again, he is not here for it. So that's going to be a continued point of contention until we get that squared away, which... I can see both sides. Like she presented me with a DNA test that says that 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 I'm the child's father. However, she also has a history of like exaggerating and like that empty packet and all these other things. So she also got a history of lying just to put that pin that baby on you. So, and I don't know why. Like if you want to be free of Zach, if you can clear up being free by getting this paternity squared away, you should do it. I don't know. I don't know. It's just way too much. Either way, um, I understand where Fatima's coming from. Let's just get, like, let's go take the test. Let's uh, unbiased party. Let's just do this thing right so we don't have to keep going through this. But, of course, you know, that's not how the script was written, and we're going to have to keep going through this. All right. Gary. <laughs> Gary is so wonderful. Hence the sarcasm, right? That... He's on the phone booking a flight for some chick. We know it's not Andy. We know it's not Penelope. He asked her for her birthday. He asked for all these different things. Yeah, I'm about to fly you out. You know, blah, 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 blah. Some dude rushes in. We're going to presume him to be his assistant and says, hey, um, some investigators are, I mean, some of our investors are pulling out. The jig is up. They're throwing around words like scam, Ponzi scheme. Um, my biggest, our biggest investors are taking the money out of the account because they weren't secured. Um, calling him a scammer. And he is now in cleanup mode. He's not interested in getting caught. And dude is, whoever dude is, the dude is that walked in, he's already one step ahead of him. He's already started wiping computers and everything. Which tell you, like, yeah, you probably have some scheming going on if, if dude already has an action plan to start wiping computers and getting rid of stuff. And so now we need to scramble. And then Hayden calls him and says, hey, um... Why is the FBI at my house looking for you? Like, what's going on? The FBI is here and they're looking for you. And so now we got to deal with that when it comes to Gary. Um, and, you know, that's how we're going to round out the episode for this week. However, in the preview for next week, we see that he's trying to call Andy. I'm assuming she's a lawyer and she needs, she want, he wants her help, but she's not answering whatever the issue is. And somehow this has come back to be Andy's fault. That you are a Ponzi scheme scammer, scamming narcissist that should be castrated. What else is new? Um, yeah, so so we'll see what happens. Hopefully the FBI drags his ass off to be a cellmate with Q and they get to just, you know, be butt buddies off into the sunset. That would be great for me, but that would not work for the storyline, I'm sure. Anyway, that has been Season 7, Episode 2. Let me know what you think about the episode. Like, comment, share, subscribe, or whatever it is that you feel like doing. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.